up y'all happy saturday oh man look at this you'd think i was new at this let's try that again what's up y'all happy saturday everybody day before valentine's for those that are interested in that welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact i am your host edward euler happy to be joined by the peanut gallery welcome y'all today we are busting out fayum designed by friedman freeze and published by, I guess, his company, right? 2F Spiele. And uh, I have it on good authority to say that there's probably a good chance this is going to be coming from Rio Grande Games in the not-so-distant future. So, yeah. Looking forward to this one. I, full disclosure, have not played a full game of this yet. Uh, it's a pretty simple mechanical game, but the, the actual depth of it, I think, as far as the choices we're going to be making, and by we, I mean y'all and me, because solo today, right? It's just, just us hanging out. I'm in an extraordinarily good mood. I hope y'all are as well, other than it being ridiculously cold outside. Hopefully everyone's having a, having a great Saturday. Thanks for hanging out today. If you guys, before we get started, more often than not, I, I, I've stopped asking, really, for the most part, at the beginning of streams, but Drop it a thumb, subscribe, hit the bell notification, support the show over on pledgehc.com. Y'all have noticed, we're up to 1,010. Glory to Rome's. Let's, let's catch up. Let's do that, shall we? All right. So let's have some fun today. It's going to be a relaxed stream. Uh, I'm going to do some of it on the front end, and I'm going to do the rest as cards come up and as they show up in the market, because honestly, that's just what makes the most sense, all right? So, yeah. All right. There's a lot of wooden bits in this game. Anyway, whatever. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, let's do it. All right. So, the idea of the game. So, I guess the the setting and the concept of what it is we're going to do. And I'm going to butcher two names in this. Just here we go. The Oasis Lake Basin, Fayum, was artificially built 3,900 years ago by enlarging the Bar Yusef channel that connected to the Nile to create a regulated floodplain. During the Middle Kingdom of Egypt, this swampland was slowly changed into farmland under the aegis of pharaohs such as Amenemet III and Sesostris II. That's pretty close, I think. They ordered their advisors, their advisors to build a system of canals and dikes to reclaim the land surrounded by desert and inhabited by crocodiles, because, of course, and turn it into a granary. For Egypt. Now, during the reign of Amenemet III, you are the Pharaoh's advisors, commanded to harvest goods, build roads, found settlements, and do much more for the good of Fayum. You are being supplied with the necessary manpower, <clears throat> resources, and money, which means that if another advisor needs to use your roads, farms, and other buildings, they may do so since everything you build is owned by the Pharaoh. Now, collectively, whenever we would be building out here in a multiplayer game, other players, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing, think roads and boats. I don't own stuff, right? Unless uh, very few things like cards, so on and so forth, money, etc. All right. Well, so anyway, uh, the, it says that the game features a card mechanism reminiscent of deck builders and the market mechanism successfully used in Power Grid. That's an understatement, I would say. Gain more and more valuable cards. Use the structures built on the game board to your advantage. In other words, for your reputation, which is the goal of the game. In the end, the most cunning advisor who creates the best card combinations will win fam. All right. So... What is it y'all are looking at? So we have the main game board, obviously. We have a reputation track or a victory point track around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Then we have two different types, well, 
let me back up. We there are two peninsulas. We have the small peninsula. Good thing I don't talk for a living. Small peninsula, large peninsula up there. Now, whenever we're talking adjacency in this game, just know that the uh, the river that runs through it here uh, bisects. So this is not adjacent to this, whereas everything here would be adjacent to that. Okay, so know that going forward. Then there are. Three different types of main resources in this game. We have wheat, we have grapes, and we have stone. Now, if a think of a, the difference between these type of locations out here as rural, and then any time there is something already built on it, some piece of wood outside of a crocodile or a worker, outside of that, just know that any other type of wood, whether it's a settlement, a workshop, stuff like that. Anytime it has any other type of wood on it, it's then a developed site. So rural, you're going to mostly get resources that are shown out here, and then developed is more commerce based. So a lot of uh, money and victory point a, a la reputation type things, okay? Then over here on the left-hand side, we have two different markets. It's really one market, but mm, you have the current market, which are these four cards over here, and then you have the futures market over up on the top part. Now, the one thing I wanna point out is these cards will always be numbered from lowest number in the top right-hand corner to the highest number all the way up. So as we refill over here, this will not convey or down like in a lot of games. Instead, uh, with this being card number 44, if card number, say, 46 were to come out, 44 would then go into the active market, whereas if it were 43, 43 would be out here in the active market and 44 would stay there, et cetera, et cetera. All right, what else are you looking at here? Well, in this game, we have a administration card that is for the solo game. I'll go into the details on that in a little bit. I start with four bucks there. I have a hand of cards, which I'm actually, this is only going to be set up here for an example at the very beginning. Uh, otherwise, those will be on a different camera to start with, or going forward, I should say. A moment, there we go. And then there are a ton of things that are off camera. And let me show you guys these. So you have the resources. These all here are unlimited. So you have wheat, you have grapes, you have stone, you have fish, and you have roses. Roses are going to be the wild resource. Anytime you have to pay a resource, you can always substitute a, re a rose for, hmm, okay? So these are unlimited. However, and then there's the bank. So you have ones, fives, and tens. You don't need to see that. Everything else is going to be limited, whether it's workers, roads, palaces, or I'm sorry, these are bridges, palaces, grand bridges as well, hence they're gold. Then we have settlements, we have workshops, we have building blocks, and a plethora, Hefe, of row ads, of roads. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's, there's one other, and I want to, uh, extensions. There are five extensions. Those, everything that I just showed you there, other than the basic resources, all of those are piece limited. All right? All right. So what is it we're gonna be doing? Well, the game takes place over an indeterminate number of rounds, and then there's going to be three options you can do on your turn. You can either play a card from your hand and then uh, carry it out fully, number one, uh, or in lieu of that, you can always discard the card and just take two bucks instead of doing what the card says. The second is you can buy a card from the card market, paying whatever the shown cost is. Now, in a multiplayer game, there are discount tokens. There are not discount tokens in a solo game, so I'm not even going to bother talking about. Or your third action is going to be carry out the administration action. If you're familiar with something kind of like a uh, Concordia, type thing to where you're going to be playing cards into a discard. Uh, the administration is how you're going to get those cards from the discard back into your hand. But it doesn't work exactly like that. More on that here in a little bit. So game takes place over an indeterminate number of rounds. Round and round we go, either playing a card, buying a card, or retrieving cards as well as some other stuff. Continue doing that until there are four disaster cards. All right, so if you take a look here, ignoring these, there are eight yellow 
uh, bordered cards, whereas the normal cards, if you will, are going to be in this blue border. There are four disasters, wasteland, drought, heat, and sandstorm, all of which suck, okay? The game ends when these four cards are all out here in the future market. And then you take one, and that basically says that's the end of the game, but you can continue. We'll get into that more as we go. But then we're going to figure out how many points we have, and there's going to be some goals for the solo game. All right, so let's go over it a little bit more in detail, but I'm not gonna go like crazy in detail because honestly, the game kind of teaches itself for the most part uh, as we go along, but I will hit on some basics. So first thing first is you can play a card from your hand. When you play a card from your hand, these are our starter cards. You know that because there's an S in the top right hand corner, as you can see. When you do so, you must carry out the entirety of that action or in lieu of taking the action, just discard it and get two bucks from the bank. Okay. All right. Usually you're going to, uh, the green is you're going to get whatever it is. The red is you must pay whatever it is. And then you get whatever is in green. That kind of makes sense, okay? I'll go over these cards when we actually uh, go into the actual game itself. Just know, play a card from your hand, carry it out fully, or get $2, and then you, uh, you get, or carry it out fully or discard it to get $2. If you carry out the card, you must pay whatever is in red, and you, mu you get whatever is in green. That's pretty simple. The next action option is buy a card for three, four, five, or seven bucks, and that immediately goes into your hand. So unlike normal deck builders where you're drawing a hand of cards, these are in your hand to begin with, and then you can always play whatever card that you want, including any card that you purchase, right? The last option is administration. So as you are playing cards, you're gonna be putting them out here into your discard area. All right, so the administration says, okay, you're going to get $3 minus the number of cards left in your hand. So if you have three or more cards, you get zero money. You never have to pay money to the bank. So you get that amount of money. So if you have zero cards, you get three bucks, etc. cetera. All right, then after that, you may take zero, one, or two workers from the board back into the supply. And if you do so, you're going to get that times $1. So if you remove two, you get two bucks. Remove one, get one buck. Remove none, get zero. Then take the top three cards from your discard stack back into your hand. It's really important to point out here that the order in which you discard cards is kind of the crux of this game. So as you play cards, you're going to put them onto the top of your discard pile. So playing your weaker cards early so that they're buried so you don't need to actually get them because you only get the top three cards back for free, that's important to remember. So you can never manipulate the order of your discard pile, okay? So you take the top three cards from your discard stack and then in addition to that, if you wish to, if there are still some remaining cards and you wish to do so, you may pay $1 to take the next card. Then, and this is in the solo game, you may pay $2 to take the second card, $3 for the third card, etc., etc. Continue doing that until you choose to not take any more. And remember, step two here is always optional. And then step three is replace two cards of your choice from the market, the current market. So maybe I get rid of this card and this card. Then we're going to draw the deck. And then what happens is we will look at the numbers and then we will rejigger the eight cards out there and then do it all over again. Pretty simple. We do that until, and let me make sure I get this right. After you draw the last card of the draw pile, continue to draw cards from the final turn stack. The final turn stack is at the beginning of the game, I drew 12 cards. The eight that are in the current market and four that are in the uh, later or the, the uh, future market. And then these were the four that I drew as well. So these 12 cards are all going to be shuffled up. Then we're going to, you know, replace cards in a market, just like what I had said, continue moving until we start getting these. And it could be the first four, it could be the first, the third, the eighth, whatever, you get the idea. 
The natural disasters will push the higher action cards into the current market, and then the natural disasters always will remain in the futures market. The natural disasters, those four, the drought, the wasteland, etc., will never go into the current market. So continue to take turns until you place the, place the fourth natural disaster in the card market. So in other words, when this, this, and this, and this are all in those four spots, when that happens, that triggers the end of the game after you can no longer take the administration action. So you can continue taking actions if you wish, wish, wish to. Because when you do, that triggers the end of the game. Final scoring is score. If you take this card, it's zero points. You take this card, it's zero points. But if you take this one or this one, it's zero points. So in other words, take the card, however many points you score, you score. So what is our goal? Well, if we were doing the challenge of the Pharaoh, the starting goal is gain at least 150 points. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Then in subsequent games, if you're doing like a little campaign game here for the solo, you can mark off and you can mark off a maximum of one of these things per game. So you could always make it harder on yourself. Gain 150 rep and do something whatever these are. And then uh, once you've done all that and you've unlocked all the achievements, um, the achievements, like after you've gained in the first game, you gained 150 rep, you unlock this one, and then instead of $4, you start the game with 10, and then you're gonna try and do one of those, et cetera, et cetera. So as it is, we're gonna try and get 150 rep. That's our goal for today. And that, basically, in a nutshell, is how you play fam. Okay, any questions? No, good, all right, awesome. Uh, so, do I succeed? Do I score the 150 points or not? And over under on Glory to Realms, I'll be honest, when I do solo streams, there's just not a lot of them. So, I'm gonna say two and a half, because a lot of times I forget. I told y'all I'm in an amazingly good mood today. So, I'm celebrating uh, by having my all-time favorite tea today, Rose City Gem Mitra from Smith Tea. This stuff is like, uh, this is what I imagine ambrosia tasted like. Not really, but it's my ambrosia, so go with it. Oh, that is so good. And the other tea, my backup tea today, uh, this is thanks to one of the patrons. It's uh, from uh, Verdant Tea. This one is a full roast Wulong Revival Oolong. So, from Angji, Fujian, China. So, I haven't tried this one yet. I lied. I've had this one once before, just not today. So, there we go. All right, there we go. Okay. Uh, I had set this up for an example, but I'm actually not going to do it because I'm just going to talk about it. By the way, I don't know if y'all noticed, but there's a serious rivalry between the crocodiles. So, small island, big island. So, you notice they're facing this way and facing. You get bored and you try and do clever stuff and like little Easter egg stuff and make up stories in your head when you're setting stuff up like this. Just saying. That's what you do. So, anyway, I need to shuffle the deck here. All right. So... I really don't, but that's all right. Oh, uh, what do the Crocs do? I will talk about that when we uh, when we get there, Eric. All right. Or Merck can answer for me. That's fine too. I don't mind Merck. Go for it. Um, you know what I didn't do? I didn't figure out like a draw. When this gets low, I mean, there's a lot of cards in the deck. When this gets low, I'll put it on screen. But as it is, I'm not going to bother. Uh, the next thing I need to do to finish setup, now that I've shown off uh, the 12 cards, is these need to get shuffled as well. So I will go ahead and do that. All right. Michael, there's that worth question again. Those that have played this, is it worth the purchase? Watch the stream, Michael. Check it out and see. All right. All 
All right. So these are going to, these are the, uh, like the end game, the, the 12 here. So we'll just go ahead and put those up there and not worry about it. Uh, you'll notice that the victory point track goes to 50 and we have a 50 and a 100 marker. And uh, I have extras um, in the other player colors. Hopefully we need them. Let's hope so. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you know what I'm actually going to do is I will bring these down here. That's not perfect, but that's okay. Let's go ahead now that we're getting started, talk about what my options are here in my hand. So the first thing is you'll notice that I have three farmer cards. Now, the game also comes with this handy dandy little glossary for all the cards. And it literally lists every card, right? All the way through this. Okay, so having not played this to its entirety yet, solo, uh, some of these will be unfamiliar, a lot of these actually will be unfamiliar. So as it is, let's go and talk about the farmer cards. So we're going to go and talk about those three cards right there. So the first thing is you place a worker upright or place a worker out on the board into an undeveloped uh, resource space adjacent to another worker, as you can see right here. If it's the first one, you can place it onto any undeveloped space. So again, developed, 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 developed. Okay. That all makes sense. So we have building sites out here and then we have a settlement out there. So those are all developed spaces. Every other space on this board is undeveloped. So I can choose to place a worker and now I will actually show that example. I could place a worker say out here because it's my first one. However, if on a subsequent turn, I wanted to go ahead and take that farmer action, I can place it adjacent to an existing farmer. So what is adjacent? I could place it there, 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 or there. I cannot place it here because it's not adjacent, right? Make sense? Also, if that worker were there, the only places I could place a further worker is either here or here because those are the only two undeveloped spaces that are adjacent. Cannot place them here. That makes sense? Hopefully that all makes sense. All right, cool. Now, when you also do that, in addition to that, um, depending on the resource that you place it on, you gain that type of resource. Do you get a, you get a wheat, you get a grape, or you get a stone, very simple. In addition to that, these farmers are pretty bad mofos. So what does that mean? They also remove crocodiles. So if you take a look at the top of the card, if it shows a little crocodile up here, it means you may remove any existing crocodile and the Pharaoh will pay you one buck for doing so. And apparently they're really good at it because they never fail. So there we go. All right, so there you go. All right, so that's the farmer action. That's super, super easy. Other two options are uh, Zwei Weiji or, 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 or two roads, all right? So the two roads allows you to wait for it, place two roads. They have to connect to, uh, a, they, mm, try that again in English. They must connect two adjacent crocodile free spaces because uh, road builders are not as Billy Badass as the farmers. So therefore they don't remove crocodiles. Notice it must be on crocodile empty places. All right. When you do so, those are now developed because there is some sort of wood that isn't a crocodile or a farmer on that space. Now they must always uh, connect back. Uh, let me, they either start at a settlement or building site. So a settlement or a building site or continue from an existing road or bridge. Very simple. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Now, when you do so, you're going to pay two resources, one per road, depending on what type it connects to. So for instance, if I chose to build a road from say this uh, building site to right there, uh, I would have to pay a stone. Why? Because it connected into a stone area. If I did like this, I couldn't because there's a crocodile, indulge me. Let's say it were like this. Well, then 
I would have to pay one grape. Okay, you get the point. I don't need to belabor that. You do that for each of the two roads. And for doing so, what do you get? Three rep, three victory points. In addition to doing that, or in addition to getting that, you gain an extra reputation for every time. Let me reword that. If a road finishes the first direct connection of two settlements, two building sites, or one on one, you gain an extra reputation. So in other words, if we had built out and I'm going to need the peanut gallery to help me remember this because this is going to be very easy to forget. Let's say on my turn, I built, say, this road and I built that road. So that would cost me two stone. That is a building site to a building site. I get an extra rep. So I would actually get four rep. Okay. But on a subsequent turn, let's say it were like this and we were to connect something along the lines of this. I do not get the extra rep. Why? Because it had already been connected. And then if I connected it to this settlement, I would get another one, so on and so forth. You get the idea. All right? So that is uh, two roads. All right. And lastly, settlements. Settlements, crocodile-free resource space of your choice. Crocodile-free resource space, meaning here, 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 right? Okay? In addition to that, uh, you can always have workers on spaces that have settlements on them. You don't remove. So in other words, if, the, uh, if a worker were here, I could also place a settlement there. It does not preclude me from doing so. And last but not least, there must be a one uh, hex gap between settlements. So in other words, I cannot place a settlement there, 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 even if they had no, um, no crocs there. Okay. But what do you have to do to do so? Pay a wheat, pay a grape, pay a stone, get three rep, get three bucks, boom, done. Pretty simple, right? And it is possible that you gain an extra reputation if it already had a road connected and it connected back to another settlement or building site. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, so that's all the starter cards. And then I, th I feel like we ought to go over at least these four, if not all eight, and then we actually can truly get started with things. All right, welcome, Paul. All right, so let's go ahead and go over these left to right. So sacrifice numero 12 says, making a sacrifice is rewarded by the gods. Place one building block. A building block looks a lot like that. Okay. Place a building block on any building site. Again, the building sites are the pre-printed ones already out here on the board. And you'll notice that how many building blocks can be on a given building site, right? All right. Any worker present remains there. Each building site has a limit for building blocks as shown, which I just said. Remove one of your cards from the game. Gain a reputation and three bucks. You can choose any card from your hand, discard stack, or even discard this card. When removing a card from the discard stack, don't change the order of the remaining cards for the reasons we've already discussed. All right, pretty simple. So the iconography here is really good, by the way. So then we have the uh, stone supplier, number 18. Place a worker onto a settlement, gain two stones. Yo dog, pretty simple. Next one, migrant farmer, and that is number 26. Move one upright worker to all workers are placed upright. I should point out, okay. Move one upright worker up to two adjacent resource spaces or move two workers one adjacent resource space each. You can choose any workers on the board except prone workers from gem searchers, which is card number 60. We'll get there when we get there. Even workers standing on settlements or building sites. Depending on chosen spaces, they gain one of each of the given resources and then remove up to the two crocs, just like farmers. Why? Because it has the croc marker on it. Okay, very simple. And last is uh, number 30, the marketer. Place one worker upright on any settlement. I'm just going to assume they're upright unless it's specifically it says otherwise, so I don't have to say that every time. 
Uh, one to three times, pay a dollar to gain a resource of your choice, grape, stone, wheat, or fish. You can choose the same or different resources. Boom, done. All right. I'm not going to bother with the others. I, I will talk about every time we move a new card into the market. And done. We start the game with four bucks. So in other words, we could start with the building site, which is great for churning through cards. That seems like a pretty good card. Now, there is no mechanism here to discard cards out of here unless there's a card specifically that says that. So, ah, huh. I mean, the problem is we don't need resources to I think it's a little aggressive, a little early to start getting rid of cards, though. So I think, uh, oh, thank you, Murr. That's one other thing. Uh, whenever you have to pay a resource, so for instance, a, a wheat, a grape, and a stone here, uh, when you build a settlement, in lieu of a given resource, your choice, you can either substitute a rose by any other name, or three bucks for each one that you want to res. Uh, you want to uh, substitute. So you could pay six bucks and a stone. There you go, all right? Yes, I guess you do churn the market during an admin. That's a fair point. But I, I kind of want to keep that card around. So I think the smart thing to do to start off with is go ahead and play the farmer card. So I will, I'll use that as my, yeah, you know what? I already had it set up. So we'll go ahead and put that. So our first farmer, what is it we're going to need? Well, to be able to place uh, settlements, I need one of everything. And to be able to place roads, I need resources for whatever place I'm going. So, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and start? I think I'm good with that. So I remove the croc, that gives me a buck. Suppose I had to do this in order. First things first, I place the worker, I get a grape. So I will go ahead and, there we go. So we get a grape, I remove the croc, get a buck, boom, done. And the croc's out of the game, there we go. Oh, thank you, Murr, so you can only do that once. Okay, so $3 to replace one resource, not multiples. By the way, uh, Murr, how many days you up to? <laughs> that's not a farmer. That's not a knife. That's a knife. All right, so first turn, done. Now what do we do? I kind of like the idea of getting another grape and building some row ads. Hmm. So I think we will go ahead and play another farmer so we can always fan them out like this, okay? And let's go ahead and throw that there. That gives us another grape and another buck. And Croc is out. It's not really a good engine builder, I just realized, building roads. It's good for points. And I could build two roads, one there, one there, to be able to pay two grapes. So I could pay the two grapes, that'd be worth four points. Because I'd connect a settlement to a building site. Um, that's staggeringly impressive, Murr. 2,278 straight days playing a game. That's amazing. Legitimately amazing. I don't know how you do it. I love board games. I don't love board games that much. <laughs> that is, that is ridiculous. Um... All right, what do we want to do? I, I'm kind of looking at that stone supplier card, actually, right now. Um, just because I can go ahead and place on a settlement and grab two stones, so it's a really good way to 
get stone going, which then allows me to start building roads out here. Hmm. I kind of like that idea, so let's do it. I'll pay four bucks. I'll go ahead and take that stone supplier card. And you know what? Let's go ahead and place that out there. Let's go ahead and play it. So just make sure, number 18. No, I cannot. Wait, 18. I can, check that, never mind. Play a worker, gain two stone on a settlement. So I will do so, so I will go there. By the way, because of the top-down camera, these are going to be upright, and then whenever they're prone, I'm going to stand them up like this because they're harder to see that way. Um, so we know they've been used. So there we go, and that'll be two stone, okay? I mean, for any of the veterans of the streams, you guys know that's how it works, but just in case not. All right, um, now what? I mean, I need a wheat. Oh, that actually works out pretty well, I think. That would be one of each, and yeah, I kind of like that idea. So you know what, we'll go ahead and play a third work or a third farmer card. And remember, it must be adjacent to an existing farmer. And so I need a wheat, so I want to place it on the wheat. So I'll go ahead and place it right here. There. I'll get a buck. I will get a wheat. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Not some chaff. And done. And then, and then let's go and bust out the settlement card. Settlement says I have to place it. I cannot place it directly adjacent to an existing settlement. So that'll be a uh, wheat, a grape, and a stone. And I will place that right there. And for doing so, there we go. We got three bucks and three rep. Seems like a good gig. So I'm up to six. And boom, 147 to go. What up? Oh no, you're, uh, you know what? That's actually a really good point. Let me double check. I should have refilled the market, I believe. Uh, t -t 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 -t. You're right, I should have. All right, so, hmm, forgot that already. All right, so what we're gonna do, we will, as soon as I took that card, I should have. So that's my bad. Every time I take a card, help me remember that, but uh, revenue, that's card number four. So card number four is going to go always. Um, get five bucks instead of just getting two. That seems good. So you know what? Let's go and let's go and get that card. All right, for our next action. So spend five, get two back. Uh, done, and then let's just go ahead and play it. Straight away, get five bucks. That seems good. Just saying. Replace the card. And we have the, uh, <laughs> I almost said the backer because German. Uh, that's card number 98, you'll notice. So don't even worry about trying to figure out what it is. We will see it at a future time. So if you take a look over here, we have those order and then here, do, do, 58 will actually go right there. So we have order, we have assistant, we have baker, and we have apparently a city in Florida, Homestead. There we go. All right. So that said, though, we did get a new card in there. We got the farm. You can bet it all. Terrible jokes today. Terrible, but that's all right. Number 44, what do we got? Hungry people demand food. Weird how that works. Place one workshop, as shown on it, right? Place a workshop on any wheat space that is already developed. Again, it has a road, it has a settlement, it has something on it, right? By a road, uh, oh, developed by a road or a bridge. Okay, cool. Any worker present remains on the space, pay a grape and a stone, gain three rep and three wheat. Very simple. All right, cool. There we go. All right. 
So as you can see, mechanically, not a real hard game here. Um, so we have one card left in our hand. Do we want to go ahead and bust that out? But here's the, here's the catch now. Uh, you'll notice, right, whenever you place a road, you have to pay the resource. This is what we have. We have a grape and a stone. I really don't want to pay the three bucks to be able to do hmm for the extra point. So I could build like one right here. I could build one there, there. I could build one there uh, for the stone, right? And then for the grape, that I could go ahead and build out there. Maybe that's not so it's a bad idea. And it gives me three points. So let's, do we want, yeah. And it gives us more money this way. So let's go ahead and make mistakes, play poorly, and let's see how it goes. So we're gonna go ahead and build two roads. And they must come from an existing road or bridge, which the bridge is down here. I will go ahead, or a building site or a settlement. So that is going to cost me the stone, and this is going to cost me the grappa. There we go, boom, done. I could build either direction coming out there. That's all my resources. That gives me three rep. It doesn't connect anything, like I would mentioned earlier. Up to six, boom, done. Well, now we're out of hand cards. So what do we want to do? Our choices are either administration or buy some cards. You know, that migrant farmer is looking kind of tasty. I kind of like that idea. I think I will do that. So I'll pay the five, uh, four bucks. And I will take the migrant farmer. And before I do anything else, grief hill. And the migrant farmer, remember, allows you to move one or two workers and then get whatever resource and clear crocs as well, right? And let me double check one more thing. That's card number 26. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, that seems like a really, really good card. So let me go ahead and uh, Refill, and we have card number, answer to life, the universe, and everything, number 42. 42 is coming into play here. Uh, that says, the grower says, place a worker adjacent to a river space. It does not have to be adjacent to any other worker, specifically, and when you do so, get two wilds, a.k.a. roses, just in time for Valentine's Day. All right. Let's go ahead and bust out that migrant farmer, though. And remember, I can always play any of these cards. That glare is really bad. Let me fix that. I don't like that. Uh, other way. There we go. That's a little bit better. There. All right. So the uh, I can always play any of these cards for two bucks if I wish, which is tempting because I do want that grower. I do. But as it is right now, let's go ahead and just do the migrant farmer. I can move up the two workers. Um... I definitely want a grape, right? So, and it is to an adjacent spot. Let me double check. One, two, uh, two adjacent resource spaces or two to one. Okay, so I will move. <sighs> I think this one will go ahead and move there. I'm gonna get a grape and a buck. I mean, that's just a little money generator right there. These are pretty awesome cards. Then, because I want the grape to be able to build a road there, the question is though, what other resource do I want right now? I would like another stone to be able to continue this bad boy, but unfortunately, that's not available to me. I think I will actually take a wheat. So I will go and move this one down there. Get a buck and a wheat. Boom, done. All right. All right, again, we are out of cards. Now, now, 
Before we choose anything else, before we decide, yes, remember, we can always buy cards. And we have a total of what? We have six bucks to our name, right? But let's take a look. We only get the top three of these, which means we could build roads. We could do another migrant farmer and we can get cash. If we want any other past the top three, we're going to have to spend some quiche. A buck for the first one, two for the second. So this, this, and this, I get. That's a buck. A farmer is two bucks. That's a lot of money. Huh. Do I want to spend three bucks to be able to take the settlement and the farmer back into my hand? I think I will, actually. Do I want the farmer? Just play, yeah, because I, I think I want another dude out there. Uh, yeah, I think I will. So let's go ahead and bust out admin. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, first things first. So income, three minus the number of cards in my hand. That's zero, so I get three bucks. I'm going to turn two and get five. Boom, done. Next step, I can remove some amount of workers and get a buck per worker that I remove. Hmm. So all this does is, is basically a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and remove, eh, you know what, let me go ahead and remove these two workers there. And let me double check, they go back into your, all right, back into the supply. I am almost positive, but let me double check a moment. Yes, to the supply. And you gain a buck each. So that's another two bucks. Okay, done. Then take back the top three cards. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So these three back into my hand for free. And then I could buy back more cards. Well, we are flush right now. So that would be one, three, six. So I know I'm getting these two for sure. So that's going to be three. This one is going to be three, and I like that. I will. And then for an additional four bucks for a farmer. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave those two farmers in, in my discard. So there we go. Boom, done. And I will keep my five bucks, which now means I have these cards now in my hand. Yeah, y'all can see that. And is that clear? Is that focused? Because I'm wearing my glasses and the screen is kind of far away, so it's a little blurry to me, but is it clear to y'all? I, yeah, I tested it and made sure, but just want to make sure. Um, okay, so that, and then after that, the last thing is replace two cards of your choice in the current market. Okay. Well, now that we have established how the, you've seen everything, I want to keep this because it allows us to churn through cards. So I do not want to get rid of that one. I want the roses because wild. So those two aren't getting removed, which means the marketer then goes away. I'm okay with that. Pay a buck and, and then, yeah, I, I'm okay, I think, getting rid of the marketer. So that one is out of the game. Oh, so the other question then is, should I have bought cards before doing this if I want to keep these, right? Um, Is it insane for me to think about throwing away the farm? That's a lot of wheat. 
I really don't want to throw that away. Oh, that is gross. So do I get rid of the sacrifice then? Just because you look at the, the numbers on the cards, right? And it tells you the relative strength of cards. Ah. Uh, hmm. All right. I think I'll get rid of the sacrifice. I'll sacrifice the sacrifice. Done. So draw two cards. Number two. Okay. So the gardener is half as good as the grower. Well, that can get sacrificed. We know that because, I mean, if we're going to, it's half as good, right? And the next one, because that's card number two. The next one. Oh, by the way, all the cards are even number. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Uh, all right, so that means 62 is going to come on over. 52 will come into play and put it over there. All right, so what do we have? We have order, which I'm going to assume is going to allow us to manipulate the order of our discard pile. So 52, choose one to three in your hand and place them at the bottom of your discard stack. Gain $2 per card and don't change the order of the other card. So it just buries three cards. Oh, the, I'm not going to, I don't need these. I'll just discard them, but they go into the bottom. That's kind of clever. Ah, all right. Well, there you go. We are now done with administration. You've now seen the entire game, essentially. Mechanically, at least. All right. A moment. Oh, Tor makes a good point. Even number cards. Opening for odd number expansion cards. Well, of course. Right. I guess that makes sense. So you, I guess, because you didn't want to do 1 through 50 and then have the extension, expansion cards 51 through 100 because then that would all be higher card. Okay, I get that. That makes sense. See, this is why y'all are amazing. Y'all are so smart. Huh. All right. By the way, random, completely random thought. I was thinking about this earlier. Are there certain dog names that you, like, if you heard a name, you would think of a particular type of dog? Like Lincoln. Lincoln isn't necessarily a greyhound. I love the name, but you get the idea, right? So, like, take for instance... I'm going to throw out a name. You tell me what type of dog you think. Just random stuff that goes on in my head. Humphrey. Like, to me, that brings to mind a very particular face. So what kind of dog would you say is a Humphrey? Did I screw one up? 98.74. Yeah. I would have caught it, but thank you. There we go. All right, cool. So here is, here's our hand. What do we, man, where does, where does all this stuff come from? Vacuumed it. All right. Huh. All right. Well, I mean, I think we want to play revenue as late as possible so we get that every turn, right? Hmm. I mean, I did just build, or I just did, 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 I just got, I'm thinking two roads. Oh, now I'm starting to see it. This is developed, which means I cannot put a farmer here. So the more I build roads, the less spaces I have for resources. And as it is right now, I cannot get any kind of stone unless I play the stone supplier. So that's something to be cognizant of. Oh, this, oh, this is clever. See, see, I'm thinking more the bulldog, the Boston Terrier type, like that face to me says Humphrey, but, but apparently, apparently it Schnauzer, Basset Hound, Husky, Husky for hum, no. No, I'm not saying you're wrong, Mur. I'm just saying no. But yeah. 
<laughs> oh, you know what I totally forgot? So while, here, you guys help me decide what card to play. And while we're doing that, I forgot, this is a solo stream. Let's bust out some tunage. Oh, interesting note while you guys are helping me decide on this. Uh, there were some, uh, there were, there were, there's, there's a couple of companies out there that will try and do copyright claims for uh, free music. And I had to dispute them and it worked. So, yay. All right, a little uh, lo-fi, royalty-free. Oh yeah, that'll work. See, Humphrey is a boxer. Yeah, see, I agree. Oh yeah, I dig it, I dig it. Let me know the volume on that, all right? So what do we got? Really? Really? Just, just, just Yens? Farmer? All right, let's go farmer. You and me, Yens. Let's do it. All right. So we need to place another worker and get a resource. Um, what do we want? Uh, I'm thinking a, a little grappa action, a little grape. So let's go ahead and head up. Hmm. Yeah, I'm good with that. Let's go there. We will get a grape and a buck. Okay. Yeah, the order in which... The order in which... You play these is really, really clever and important. So we have, I kind of like throwing out the migrant worker now, which would get us wheat and grapes or a couple of wheat, however we want to do that, right? Uh, or, hold on one second. Let's go and pay four bucks. And let's go ahead and bust out the uh, the grower. Yeah? Because this can be anywhere on the coast. So I think that makes sense. So taking this into my hand. You know what? Yeah, I do want to be able to have this zoomed in for you guys. So yeah. All right. Um... Huh. All right, Kevin, thanks. Um, I think I kind of, yeah, let's go and bust out the grower now. I can place one worker anywhere along the coast. Right there, and we'll get two roses. I dig it. Remember, wild resources, right? And now, now with that, now we bust out Migrant Farmer and I can move them. So I think I will go ahead and move him there. And let's go and move this one here. So it's going to be two bucks, a wheat, and a grape. I 
Oh, and you asked, uh, could I do the grower on on any of these other spots? Yes, I can on a crock space, but I wanted specific. Oh, it, oh, you know what? That's a fair point. That is actually a really good point. So let me back that up. I will have done the grower here and then the migrant farmer there. That way I get the extra buck. That is a good point. Thank you. Because I'm not getting stone, I'm getting wilds. Yes, I got to re- God. One job, I know, I know, I know. What do we have, 68, the grape trader. All right, so, a moment, 68 will go. Just above 62, below 64, all right. So we have the assistant, which you'll notice that uh, the farm and the assistant kind of work together. So the assistant is 56. Place a worker, uh, gain three matching resources onto wherever it is. And then to double back here for the farm, number 44, place a workshop on any wheat space that's already developed by a road or a bridge, pay a grape and a stone, gain three wheat and three rep. Okay, that got loud, wow. There we go, all right. So, so we're sitting on five bucks. I think I want to go ahead and definitely, I think we'll go and bust out the two roads. And remember, we can always admin, but we're churning through cards over here. And I don't mind getting rid of the gardener. I don't want to get rid of the farm. So with that said, how about we do this? Let's pay the four bucks. Let's go and purchase the farm into our hand, and then let's see what we agree fill with. Number 54. Well, I mean, this is great and all, but it's not exactly working how I wanted it to because we're filling up with cards that I don't necessarily want to get rid of. So that is the expansion, number 54. Place an expansion, that is those guys. Uh, Next to any workshop without an expansion, any worker present remains on the space. Regarding other card actions, the space is still considered to be a workshop. Pay a resource of your choice, gain three rep. That seems really good too. Damn it. Well, now we need money because now we can't afford to buy any of these damn cards. Oh, yep, I bought the farm. <laughs> Um, so we need money. We can get $5 by being able to play revenue, right? So these two are the revenue generators here. I don't have any stone, but that's okay. I have a wild to be able to build a settlement. I actually kind of like the idea that would give me four, which that order, is it that important? I don't know. Well, I definitely want the assistant now that I have the farm, which is seven bucks. That's kind of spendy. Um, I mean, I have a spot particularly in mind for the settlement, so let's just go ahead and do it. So we'll go ahead and throw out the settlement. So that's gonna cost me a wheat, a grape, and a rose, i.e. a stone. And the settlement will go right here because it can't go directly adjacent. There. Oh shoot, probably should have done that in the other order. There, just realized, instead we'll put 
a worker on there to get two stone. So then for that, I will do that in that order. Order of operations. That's, that is what this game is about, right? So there, that way I paid the stone instead of the rows. And now I will go and get three rep. One, two, three, and three bucks. There we go. That's the key, trying to figure out the engine, right? And any car can give you two bucks. Thanks for the reminder for that. And now that we have that, Oh, this is too good. Now we build the two roads. So I'm going to build one road there, paying one grape. That will complete that. I'll get to that in a minute. So here. And then... Then I will pay a wheat. and I will build a row ad right there. So those are paid. Now I'm going to get three rep, plus I get one extra because I connected that, right? So that's gonna be a total of four rep. One, two, three, four. There we go. Because now I can now build the farm and the farm must go on to a wheat space that is connected to a road there. I pay a grape and a stone. That will go right there for the settlement. And that gets me three wheat and three rep. Ha <laughs> ha! Boom. And last but not least, we have that left in our hand, okay? So we're gonna hold on to that for a second. So let's take a look at the market. We currently have four bucks. I'm okay getting rid of the gardener. We've already established that, right? And hold on, Doug asks, uh, would you get an extra rep for building the road to connect the settlement and the three monument hex? So right here, yes. But I can't build the settlement, I'm sorry, I can't build the workshop with the settlement on there, I don't believe. So that's why I chose not to do that yet. Road or bridge, yeah, so I wouldn't have been able to do that, so yes. I can, and I will in a build that, but not yet. I think I want to go ahead and buy the order card. That allows me to bury cards. Do I actually, do I really care about that card? I don't know that I really care about it because I don't know that I want to do that. So if that's the case, I don't mind actually getting rid of those two cards. So if that's the case, admin is open to me. So if admin's open to me, why don't we do this? There, get a nickel. And I'm not gonna buy those cards because those are gonna be the two that I'm going to discard. So if that's the case, let's go back to admin. And remember, you don't have to completely empty your hand like I did here. I just chose to. So I'm gonna get three bucks for that. So I will turn seven in and get a 10 because I have no cards left in hand. Uh, returning workers, okay, let's take a look. I think I will return that one and I will return that one because leave them out here to be able to move around and stuff. I That feels pretty good, I think, does it? Yeah, but that guy can move the, ha! I have wheat though, I don't need the wheat really so you know what, instead of moving this guy, he's gonna go, I'll remove that one. So those two, that'll be another two bucks. There. I get top three cards and then I can buy and I have a total of 14 bucks. Okay, so 
That's in our hand, that's in our hand, that's in our hand. Oops, we can do a little bit better, hold on. So these are the three cards that I just retrieved, road building and the farm building. Okay, and then that's what we have there. So that is one, three, six, that's $10 for the grower down to there. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, yeah, so that's 10 right there to get those into my hand. And then it's another $5 to get the farmer. I won't, so I'll just pay the 10 bucks and there we go. And so here now, these are the cards that are back in our hand. And then we have to discard two cards out of the uh, out of the current market. We've already established what ones it's going to be. It's going to be the gardener and the uh, and the order card. So those are out of the game. And grief fill. What do we have? We have uh, the grape supplier and we have uh, the town. Towns go on top of settlements. All right, so that goes there clearly. And then 84 is the penultimate card. So I gotta be honest, like I had heard some really cool things about this game, just that it was really good in the uh, HC Slack channel. Patrons, $5 and up, get access, just saying, just saying. Uh, and having gone through this now, yeah. You're right. It was there. Thank you. You're right. Good call. All right. So, yeah, my bad on that. Okay. Uh... Right, I need to go over the cards. Sorry, uh, I got a little, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm definitely digging it. Uh, the grape supplier, just like, right, get two grapes. Put them on a, that's pretty simple, I think. Uh, the expansion we've already done, uh, the assistant, and now the novices, uh, that is card number 62. The bizarre, oh, sorry, novices. Remove one to three upright workers. From any space, you can't do any for gem searchers. Gem searchers are the ones that are apparently laying down. Um, gain two bucks per remove worker. Okay, cool. All right. If you put down a town, does that make it so you can't place a worker on a settlement? Uh, let me look. Number 84. It's now considered both a settlement and a town when you do so. So the answer is no, it does not preclude that. Okay. <laughs> See, Michael, I was happy to answer your question. Earlier, Michael's like, hey, heard. For those that have played this, is it worth buying? Michael just answered his own question. Edward, I really appreciate this. My wallet is cussing you. I just ordered it. See? My job is to present the game. You make the determination. But yeah, it's kind of awesome. This is clever. I like this. I'm glad they haven't raised the price on this. It's already expensive. But man, this Rose City Gem Mitra. Oh, it's so good. And Michael, I'm used to getting cussed out by wallets, so that's all right, okay? All right, so we are done with admin. We have four bucks and we have a bunch of, I really kind of like that expansion. And the expansion is discard any one resource, correct? Number 54. And gain three rep. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spend those four bucks. We're going to go ahead and take the expansion into our hand. That'll work. And then we will grief fill. 
Whoa, number 108. We'll see you in, uh, we'll see you in a minute. Paul, uh, I blame Edward for all my financial problems. Look, um, yeah, all right. I'm just saying responsible selling, okay, people, or responsible purchases, all right? How it works with multiple players and what the player count is. I think it was one to five? No, I'm looking. Yeah, it's one to five. Can't speak to it, because I can't have people over. Oh! Oh! Good news for me, and this was totally unexpected. Had a uh, virtual checkup with my PCP uh, like two days ago, three days ago, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, because it's through the VA, she was like, hey, you're 45. I was like, yeah, I know that. And she was like, well, good news. Vaccines are at 50 and older at the VA. She said, probably in the next two weeks, I'll probably be able to get first shot on the vaccine, which means a couple of uh, weeks later. So just I'm excited about that. Because let's face it, I expected to be way low because 45 relatively healthy. I don't have any at-risk people around me, really. So, so yeah, there you go. Um, okay. Just, I'm excited about it. I wanted to share. That's it. Okay. Okay, what do we want to do? Wow, and, and just the, this game opens up, man. I have wheat. Ha oh, ha, now I see where I'm making mistakes. Okay. Oh, I really want, I really want that croc gone. Let me tell you, real bad. So, nope, not a mistake. We're gonna bust out the stone supplier. Go ahead and put a worker right there and get two stone. Everybody must get, well, stone. And then I will go ahead and play the migrant worker. The migrant worker, and this is how I can do this, is one there. That clears that out. Uh, let's go ahead and get a grape. So that'll be a wheat and a grape and two bucks. Because now I want to build roads. One there and one there. And that allows me another farm, yes. So I will go road there. I will go one road there, which is a wheat, and one road there, which is a wheat. So I owe two wheat. And I get three base points rep. And then I connected this, so it's gonna be another one. I did not connect this one yet. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because now I will go ahead and play the farm onto a wheat that has a road on it. Right there, I will pay a grape and a stone, which I need to do. That'll get me three and three wheat. We are swimming in wheat. And three more. There. That felt good. All right, I forgot there is the grower too. Um, we don't have any grapes. I would like some grapes. That won't get us grapes, right? That's where the grower, because they're wild, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Aaron, I was planning to learn arc rate today. Now I just want to buy this game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Murr's right. Some of the tension in this game comes from, I want to play this awesome card now, but it's going to cost a fortune to get it back when I do the admin action. Yes. Um, all right, Michael, that's, that's awesome. Supposed to get second shot today. Too much snow in Seattle. It, it almost never snows in Seattle. How much snow do you guys have? Like two inches? I, I say that in jest, coming from somebody who lived in Portland, grew up in Portland, like three inches shuts down the entire city because you're at 500 foot elevation, right? Expect a day off from doing anything after the vaccine? Okay, I'm good, yeah. Um, cool, all right, sorry, I was a little behind on that. Um, okay. So I think I will go ahead now and go ahead and play the expansion. And I will pay a wheat because God knows I have a ton of it. So there, and I, there's only five expansions and I can put it anywhere. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and bust it out right here, right there. And that gives me three points. check out the assistant. The assistant's 56, right? So hold on one second. Three matching wherever it is. That's more wheat. Wow, I need to plan that better. Okay. Oh, I can't because they're farms. Right, so of course it's on wheat. Okay. Right now. Okay. The novices is going to go away right now, and probably the grape supplier instead of the grape. Yeah, so those two are the ones that are going to go away. So if I know that now, I'll pay that for the five bucks, low revenue. So that gives us seven. So the assistant is essentially... Which one was it? Oh no, it's putting a worker on there, gives me three. Okay. Okay, that's like a stone supplier, but better and it's for wheat. Okay, cool, all right. Seven inches in Seattle? Holy, that is a lot of snow. Wow. All right, y'all be safe. Minus 10 outside, so outside with wind chill here. Oh, no, that's, that's, uh, that, no, stay indoors. Be safe, y'all. Um, so I'm debating whether or not to play the settlement card, right? Do I bother? Because I don't technically have, hold on, forgot to grab the two roses. And all the resources are unlimited. You can use proxies if need be, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, no, I just forgot to grab them. Oh, God, no, I forgot to uh, actually do the action. I'm sorry, I need to put a worker out. Um, so if that's the case, let's go ahead and throw one. I need grapes, right? Right, but I don't need wheat. So you know what? I will go ahead. No, I won't put it there. I'm actually, let's go ahead and start clearing up here. There, and I will get a buck for that forgot. So now, I don't want to buy this card because it, in theory, will shift down and be cheaper. And I know I'm going to get rid of those two cards. So I'm, the question is, do I play the settlement? That gives me an extra three bucks to be able to buy more cards. Um, so I think I will, even though it's a rose, I mean, Spend them if you got them. I got enough. So that's fine. So I will go and throw a settlement down. In a settlement, let me get the exact um, 
any crocodile free space, just uh, that is not adjacent to an existing settlement. I mean, that allows me to get some stone this way, potentially. Eh, it allows me to get grapes there, not stone right now. But I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh God, yes, it does. I am I am a bucket of fail. You're right. It has to be adjacent to the river. Thank you. And I want to, so I will go with the original space right there. All right. Thank you, Paul. Okay, and Jens. Okay. Kurt. Screenshots from the suite. 50 below zero. Frost covering the inside of door handle. Oh, God. No. Hell no. Hell no. That, oh, God. Um, all right, so I will do that. That's going to cost me a wheat, a rose, and a stone. I will get three bucks. So I'll take two. Get a five, which that's now 11. There. And three more points for that. Up to 29. So I don't want to buy any cards. So let's go ahead and do admin. That's going to be another three bucks because I have zero cards in my hand. Uh, do I want to remove two more workers? I do. So I'll take the two bucks and figure out what two workers I'm going to remove. So I'm definitely going to want some grapes. I'm in pretty good spot. So I think I'll go ahead and take this one for sure. And I have this guy. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We'll remove that. That's cool. Good. All right. Take top three cards down to the grower. Done. So we have one, two, three. One, two, three. Right there. Four, five. And get down to the stone supplier for another nine. Leaving me one buck. That'll work. I'll take that. That leaves me one buck. I have to discard cards now. I will. So let me make sure. So one, three, six, ten, fifteen bucks. Checks out. All right. Math. Who knew? Hmm. All right. So those will come back into my hand. And then I have the three farmers still out there. What's up, B? How you doing, ma? Haven't seen you in a little bit. All right, so that's our hand. Of, uh, there we go. That's good. All right, so let's go ahead and discard our two cards now. And because we have the Grape Trader, which is better than the Grape Supplier, Grape Supplier, you gone. And, I mean, the Assistant would get three wheat or three wheat. I mean, that's nice, I guess. But honestly, the Novices, to be, I'm probably not going to be using that, so I'm going to get rid of the Novices. And we will refill too. Uh, we have the Trader. And we have... Number 80. All right. The harvest hands. Not to be confused with jazz fingers. All right. So what do we have? Uh, the trader. Looks like you can turn in any three resources for roses. Is what I'm guessing that uh, represents. Yep. And same or different resources. And the homestead on 74. 
Place a workshop on any wheat space that's already developed by a road or a bridge. So just like earlier. And that one gives you three points and four wheat. Okay. Kevin, add me to the list of once again, having my wallet abused by Edward and heavy cardboard. Just order fam. All I'm doing is showing it off. That's it, all right? Thirty degrees in Austin. This just in is cold. <laughs> just right. All right. Uh, so we're done with admin, and we could admin again. I don't want to get rid of no, no. Just to be able to get the farmers. Just no. Nah, I think there's a better efficient way of doing this. So okay. I don't care about the trader, honestly. So the migrant farmer would be nice to be able to get some extra resources and to be able to clear out some crocs. Uh, the stone supplier, always nice. So what do we not need as much right now? I mean, the, what do we, uh, the order in which you play these, you want to work backwards, right? Honestly, I, I think I get rid of the homestead and I will probably get rid of the trader as it is right now. The homestead is marginally better. It gives you one extra wheat. I don't think I really need that since I already have the farm. So, I, that's five points for the roads. I do want that though, don't I? Yeah. Uh, because I can't build any more farms right now without building roads out there. So maybe I don't... I need to be able to place workers out on the board right i can always do so with the stone supplier but do i want to do that first ah that's maddening hmm Placing a worker, aha, next to the river. You know what? Let's go ahead and bust out the grower first. So the grower will go there. That'll be a buck and two roses. Yeah, so that's a buck and two roses. Okay, now I would go ahead and build two roads. One will be there and one will be there. So that's going to be a total of three plus that is an extra. That's going to be four points there for the roads. And I have to pay two wheat for that done.
I'm going to go and play revenue for five, but keep it because I'm then going to take the grape trader, which is five. And that is number 46. That is a vineyard. So, okay. All right. So that's like the farm. Finally, those are starting to come out. It's the equivalent of a farm, but on a grape space. Have a good one, Alyssa. All right. That's a fair point, Mur. I, I probably should have, but the expansion, I'll pay a wheat, and I will put that there, and that's worth three points. Done. Probably should have done that earlier, but that ship has sailed. Okay. Um, so now, grape, stone, and wheat. That's exactly the next three plays. I'm going to play the farm. Nope, 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 nope. Wrong order. I will play the grape trader, which is going to put a worker out on any settlement. And I'm actually going to put them down here. And that will get me three grapes. Then I will play the stone supplier, which puts a worker on any settlement. Sure, we'll throw them... Yeah, we'll actually go there, that's fine. And get two stone. And then I will play the farm. Place that right there, which cost me a grape and a stone, which will get me three rep and three veet. Yeah. That's better. And now that we've done that, we'll throw another settlement out. And that settlement, and let me, is any, yeah, okay, just right there. That's gonna be a wheat, a stone, and a grape. Three bucks and you know what? Better yet, let's put it right there because then I get the extra point because that's now connected. Done. And then I will play the migrant farmer. Grape. Grape. And two bucks. We're out of cards. So now, I'm not purchasing anything. So I'll take five bucks, no cards in hand, and gonna remove two of these cats. So we will remove one there and one there. Settlement doesn't matter. So I'll remove that one and that one actually. Yeah, I'm good with that. So that's the five bucks, three, four, no cards, and then removing two, take three back into our hand, done. And then we're looking at one, three, six, ten for those. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right there. So I can't build roads and I don't have grower this turn.
I'm okay with not having the grower because roses. The roads kind of hurts because that means I can't do settlements necessarily. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Then we need to discard. Discard two. So I'm going to get rid of the trader and the homestead as mentioned. So yeah, I feel pretty good about that. We have a fisher. Hey, there we go. And... Uh, a new settlement, not to be confused with the old washed up settlement. And that's 58. All right, so the fisher. Well, I guess we'll do new settlement first. Pay two different resources, gain three and three, you gain an, okay. So it's like a starter card. Like the regular settlement, except your choice of two different resources and you see the different sign on that, okay? And then uh, the Fisher at 58. Place a worker like a farmer. Additionally, this worker must be adjacent to the channel or lake, meaning it's gotta be adjacent to water. And gain three fish and remove a crock. So that's like a, a good, cause the farmers, are buried for me. So that's actually kind of nice and it's a different resource. I kind of like that card. So I don't want to get rid of that one. The new settlement gives me flexibility for building settlements. So I guess what that... <sighs> yeah. I really want that vineyard card for sure. And then the assistant comes to my, ah, that's tough. Huh. I definitely want the vineyard. I know that. So honestly, I can't even use the expansion right now. So what I'm thinking is There it is. I'm going to play the settlement early. That's going to cost me a wheat, a grape, and a rose. I'm going to put a settlement right there. I get three rep up to 46 and three bucks. Keep the three. That's going to be one. And I'm going to take the vineyard. And then I'm immediately going to play the vineyard after we refill. Oh, I guess I do have one up here. Ah, I missed that. So let me back up. Before I play that vineyard, I'll take it into hand. But so I guess technically I could have done that first, and I will. So that's going to be another three points for the expansion. I just missed that there is one up here. Thank you. There. And that's going to be three points. Up to 49. Thanks for the catch. Who was that? Philip. Thank you. All right. Hey, team player, Corey. Happy to help. All right. Uh, so I did that. I still need to refill. So a moment. And 102, a stonemason. Okay. That, that might be a minute. Okay. Okay, so what what came in? The harvest hands. Harvest hands, number 80. Place one to three workers like farmers. Pay a dollar for each worker, depending on the chosen space. Gain a matching resource, and then remove crocs. 
So if it has a crock, it's basically a wash. But, but you have to have the money to do that first. So you can't use the money that you would get from removing crocs to place those. Interesting. But as I had said I was going to, I will now go ahead and place a settlement out here in there, the vineyard. That's going to cost me a wheat and a stone, or as I like to call it, I will not do that yet. I will get the order of operations right yet. Instead, I will go and do a stone supplier. You would think I would have figured this out yet. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. Let's go there. Make it true to what he is. Get two stone. Then I will play the vineyard. And the vineyard will go where it can be because it must have a road in it. That'll be a wheat and a stone. That'll be three and it's already connected, one here, one there, so that's gonna be five points. 50, one, two, three, four, five, hey. There we go, and three grapes. That seemed good. I think we go ahead and play revenue now for the five. All right, let's go ahead and, I'm oh, sorry, play the migrant farmer to go there and say there. So that'd be a stone and a wheat and a buck. So a wheat, a stone, and a buck for the crock. There. The grape trader the grape trader will actually come down here and grab three grapes. And I have a farm left in my hand that I cannot build. So I think I'm going to stop at that point and let's go a little admin. Now I'm only going to get two because I still have that in my hand here. And then I'll remove two workers. I'll remove that one there. And I'll remove that one there for a total of four bucks. Turn one in or turn six in, get ten. And then I get those three cards. Then I have 11, so that's a uh, one, three, six, 10. So through the expansion. The question is, do I want to get the expansion? I can use it two more times, but that is, that's six bucks right there. That leaves me a nickel. I think I'm gonna leave the expansion out there. It leaves me a nickel. No, I didn't give my, no, just that actually is 99, that's now 100. When I hit it, I haven't hit it, I'm only at 54. Oh, you know what, Philip? You might be right, because if so, I might need to back up some points. That is a really good point. Uh, all 
Wrong, wrong book. Settlements and building sites, you're right. So here's my question. How many points have I given myself for those four settlements? I know it's at least two, so I'll back it up two. That's a fair point. All right. Uh, let the peanut gallery figure that out for the rest of it. Um, what cards are we get? What ones are we getting rid of? I kind of really want to hold on to harvest hands to be able to put. Do I? Huh. New settlement. I feel pretty good about getting rid of. So that's gone. And then I really want to keep the Fisher around. And I think the assistant is kind of eh. It's three resources, I guess. But I already have to where I can get two stone and three grapes. And that basically would buy me wheat. I'm going to get rid of the... Hmm. I'm going to get rid of the assistant. I may end up regretting that. All right, so two new cards. Wheat Trader and uh, the Hermit. What the hell's the Hermit do? Hermit, card number eight. Place a uh, worker on an undeveloped space where uh, it has to be surrounded by all other undeveloped spaces. Gain two points. Remove a croc. It's just a very limited farmer, but he can be over by himself. Okay. And a wheat trader, pretty self-explanatory. So the fact that I got rid of the assistant and that a wheat trader came out kind of was a wash. So that really didn't hurt me at all now. All right. There we go. So apparently I only uh, gave myself two extra points. So that's cool. And, and, hey... Paul, come on, there we go, cheers Paul, thanks for the support, I appreciate it, thank you very much, pledge, hc.com, support the show. Hmm. Under the oolong now. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. The hermit like out in BFE and allows you to start spreading out in places you wouldn't normally be able to reach. That makes sense. I get that. Uh, all right. So. What are we, what are we wanting to do this turn? I would love to be able to build some roads. Hmm. Because... I could build there and there for five points for two stone. So you know what? I'm going to do something a little unorthodox and we're going to assistant again or administration again. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So, income is zero on that. I will remove two workers, okay? So I wanna keep, the, do I? I really don't, I do. I wanna keep that one there. I like having this guy over here, but, cause I didn't, but I'm going to have the grower, so yeah. I'm going to remove that one and that one, actually. So that's going to be two bucks. Take back the top three cards. Expansion, two roads, and grower. Come back into my hand.
Do I want any of the farmers? I don't think so. I think I'm okay. So I'm going to get rid of the wheat trader and I'm going to get rid of the hermit. Hermans. Hermit. A senior supplier will come into play and Harvest Festival will not. Oh, you guys can't see that. Sorry about that. My bad. Hold on. Okay. So, senior supplier comes in and senior supplier will actually slide in right there along with the town, but the, uh, the Harvest Festival is going to go away. That is 110. That is... Dead last. Okay. So, what do we have? We have the senior supplier in the town have come in. 82 and 84. Senior supplier. Place a worker on a settlement. Gain uh, three resources of your choice. You can choose the same or different uh, resources. Now that is worth picking up. There we go. And then the town is place a town on a settlement that already doesn't have a town. It now counts for a town and a settlement. Pay one of each, gain six rep and two bucks. That'll do. So those are two that I definitely want. I definitely want to pick up the harvest hands right now. The question is the fisher? I think I do want the fisher as well. So, you know what? Now that we're done with admin, I have seven bucks, which allow me to purchase those two. But I think right now, because that clears off a whole lot of crocs real quick. The harvest hands. That's what I'm thinking about. Ah, uh, what one do we want? I think I'm going to go ahead and take the Fisher. Yeah, so I'll spend the three bucks and take the Fisher. Not going to necessarily play that yet. Oh, that's getting tight. Uh, we will agree fill number 40, which hangs out right there. It's a small town, uh, which is not as good as the regular town. So I can discard this. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that one is definitely a candidate to get tossed, but past that, I don't know. All right. So now we will go ahead and play the expansion first and foremost. I have a ton of grapes. Let's go ahead and spend a grape. This is the penultimate expansion, and that's just the straight up three points. Boom, done. I don't care if I never see that again. Another one that I don't think I'm going to need anytime soon is going to be the Grape Trader. And I'll go ahead and throw that. There. And that gives me three grapes. I have so many grapes right now. And if I'm looking at picking up uh, the senior supplier, then I don't ever need that card again. So I'm good with getting rid of that one as well. Looking at our cards.
The migrant farmer can get us a whole bunch of stone right now, and I think we will. Because we're going to end up getting the harvest hands. So I'm going to take the migrant farmer. I'm going to move there and say across the bridge to there. That's going to be two stone. I don't remove any crocs by doing that, though. You know what? On second thought, I think that was there. I think so. And instead, actually, I will go ahead and go up there, get an extra buck and a wheat instead. So we're now at five. Okay. I will, oh, what do we do next? I'm trying to delay on uh, building roads for right now. I think we can go and bust out the grower. The grower will go ahead, get me a buck and two roses. Okay. This is really hard. I don't know that I'm going to need a ton more settlements. So we will go ahead. That's a wheat, a grape, and a stone. And I'll go ahead and put a settlement out there. That is Is there anywhere else I want? No, I'm good with that. That's three rep and three bucks. Now I will play the stone supplier, which will get me two stone. Don't know that I care where I put that right now. Now I will play the fisher, which allows me to place anywhere along a coast. Let's go ahead and throw it up here. It's going to get me three fish and a buck. Because the di different resources are going to come into play later on. That's now ten. I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. Oh, well, hold on. Slow down, slow down, slow down. It allows me to clear three crocs. It's a wash, I understand, but it gives me the resources, but it also just allows me to clear off spaces is what I'm thinking. But building towns also is fantastic, as is the senior supplier. Yeah. Oh, what do we do? 
Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Fisher has to be adjacent. You're right. So you know what? Here, I'll put him there. That's fine. That's fine. There we go. Problem solved. I don't want to spend the seven since I'm getting, uh, I want to wait because I want to be able to get a ton of cards. So you know what? I will actually take this now for four and then I'm going to immediately play it. So I owe four. I get six back. Refill. 94, which actually comes into play. And that is a banquet. Whoa. Pay six bucks in one of each of those for eight point. That seems like a terrible. That I don't like. I don't. So the harvest ends, I'm going to owe three bucks, but I'm going to get three bucks back. I think I am. So I'm not, I have the money, so I'm not going to bother. All it does is get me resources. So I will go one, I will go two, and it must go adjacent three. So that's two wheat and uh, you know, we'll go, ooh, right, because there's no stone, right. Three, three wheat and no money because I paid the three, I get the three back, whatever. There we go. Now, I think, is the time to build some roads. Well, I will do that for sure, which is the extra point. You know what? Better yet, I will do that, which is the extra point, and I will do that. So that's going to be two grapes, because I have a ton of them. So that is going to be a total of four points. Or, yeah, because I want it into... Yeah, I'm good with that. Four points. One, two, three, four. A vineyard, which will go there. That's a wheat and a stone. That'll be three and three grapes. And three rep. Five bucks. I have one card left, which is the farm, which I'm not using. So now it's time for uh, admin. So I will take two. I will take a total of $4, turn this in, and get a five, because I have one card left there. So I get two, I'm gonna pull two of these guys back. I'll go one, two. I get three cards, one, two, three, back for free. We have 15. Do this right, make sure I don't screw this up. So one, three, six, ten for the settlement. I do want that, I think. One, three, six, ten, that's fifteen to the grower. And I'm getting rid of those two. One, 
three, six. Do I need the settlement? Don't know if I do. I think I will just pay the six and get four back. So one, three, six, there. Yeah, let's see what we get out here in the market, okay? Yeah, I have no interest in the banquet, and the small town is clearly not as good as the regular town, so we have 106, which ain't coming up, and uh, yeah, the uh, senior farmer. Uh, pay, uh, pay, oh my, that banker, or uh, the baker, I definitely want. And currently, I could use that up to, yeah, I like that. I don't care about the senior farmer. So I have one that I can easily throw away. And we have a total of nine bucks. I think, oh. I have so many resources. Now, we still have a ton of cards still to power through here. So, I think that senior supplier, even though I have a ton of resources now, is going to be useful. As is that town and the baker. I think we're going to go and spend the five bucks and get the town. No, we're going to pay the seven and get the baker. And we will refill number 70. Okay, I now have the two that I can throw away right there. The senior farmer and the stone trader. So I can definitely get rid of those two easily. So the question now is... I think I'm going to admin earlier rather than later on this turn. So we're because if that's the case, I'm going to get the five bucks. Oh, that actually made the town more expensive. I just realized. Ew. Yeah, about that. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and play the Harvest Hands. I have the money, so I'm not going to bother. And let's just go ahead and clear this bad boy out. Yeah. So that would be a wheat and two grapes, and I get no money for that, but that's okay. Croc free. All right. So now I will go ahead and build some row ads. Five. 
So why don't we do that and that, and that's a total of five points because that now connects this and it connects that. So it's a total of five to 20. And I think we stopped there. Not quite, not quite, not quite, sorry. Now I will play the baker. Yeah. So I will place one that is on a settlement that is on a wheat space. I will pay a wheat. I get five bucks and two rep. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm good with that. So now I'm gonna admin. I have four cards left in my hand and I'm gonna hold on to them for right now. So no points on that. I will go ahead and pull two of these guys off. Heh. There. Top three cards back into my hand. And we have a ton of money. So that's one, three. I don't know if I need any of these. I really don't. So all of those can just stay. So that's three point or three bucks for those. And now we're at 11, we're gonna discard that and that, and I'm good with that. 50, I'll have to look that one up. And 60. All right, so here we go. That, the gem searchers came into play as well. The all-rounder says, choose one option. Take back the top card of your discard stack. Uh, take that card, then place the all-rounder on top of your discard. Or gain a resource of your choice, or gain a rep. I mean, it allows you to play a card twice, so basically it allows me to get 10 bucks, or better yet, To be able to place a farm and then the bake. Oh. You know what? Allow me one little mulligan. This guy is going to come there. So all of a sudden, that round, that all rounder is kind of nice. Then the gem searches. This one says lay down or in our case, stand up. One to five workers on any space. Pay a dollar per worker. Those can be removed only by playing the gem searcher's card again and choosing the second option. Remove all prone workers and gain $3 per remove worker. All right. Yeah, I, I realize that, Jens, so there you go. So um, yeah, that's, that's definitely, that and the town are both going to be the keepers. The gem searchers, meh. But yeah, the all-rounder. Uh, step one, purchase that for two or three bucks. There. All right. So that's where we're at. Does the gem sir does it say remove them? Right? It's or st or or let stand them up. Remove prone workers. You got to have a lot of workers on the board to be able to tie all rounder with the uh, gem searchers, but I could see that working. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's cool. I get that. Uh, all right, we have we have fish. 
Let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know that we're gonna need a ton more fish. So, it's gotta be adjacent. So, I guess we're not gonna get anything other than three fish, but I'm okay with that. That was a lot of fish. Okay. I don't think we're gonna need the stone supplier again. So we'll put that bad boy there. Let me do that in the other order. That makes more sense. So instead, then I can do that. And it gives me an extra buck. So that's two stone and a buck. There we go. All right. So now the question is, how many more settlements am I going to need? Uh, hmm. How many more am I going to need? And to be honest with you, I feel like I need to do these, but the problem is I don't have empty roads. I have, nope, it's got to be on, ah. So it makes getting the road building back really expensive if I want to just trash those two cards, which is what I want to do. Um, I think I'll go ahead and play the settlement. So it's going to be a wheat, a stone, and a grape. And that's going to be th three and three. So that's three bucks. So five, take two back. The question is, and is there anywhere I could build it that gets me? No, so it's gonna be three points. Where I was leaning towards was right there because it's all tied in right here. Or, better yet, why won't I do that? I guess that makes more sense. So that's done. Okay. Oh, I do need to refill the market. Thank you. Tax collector comes into play. Uh, okay. Tax collector says, thank you. Place a worker. Gain a dollar for each workshop on the game board, plus one for every town. Mm. One. One, two, three, four, five. So far. Okay. Well. I definitely want that town. I've been stalling, so I will take the town for the five. Then we will... 22. Ah. Oh, no, I don't care about gem searchers. Never mind. And honestly, those two are trash right now. What do we have here? Uh, whatever. You have to have those in hand. Any two, you can get any two. So, okay, whatever. Those can be trashed. All right. Well, now what? I think I'll go ahead and play Harvest Hands. And that's gonna go there, 
there, and there, which is free. Removes those, but gets me three wheat. That's a lot of resources, y'all. Okay. I'm going to go revenue for five. Then I'm going to go town, which requires one, one, and one. And that's going to place a town on a settlement. So we'll put it there. It doesn't really matter. That's going to be six points and two bucks. Oops. Six. There. Then I'm going to play the all-rounder, pull the town back, and play the town. And that's going to be one, one, and one. And that'll be six points and two bucks. Now I will play, play the baker, which is going to be a wheat. And place that there. And that'll be two points and five bucks. And now let's build some roads. The roads Yep, I think we will do that. So that'll be one there. And one there, I think. Yeah. I'm good with that. Vineyard and farm. And let me just get those. And that's probably the last time I play those two cards. So it's going to be two stone, a wheat, and a grape. That'll be six points and three of each. Three wheat and three grapes. And six to there. Do I want to purchase? No, I'm going to, I'm out of cards. There. I did place the town right there. Oh, I have to place second town. You're right. Doo -doo. That'll work. Good call. Good call. Good call. Um, ask me that at the end, Corey. All right. So I get three. I will take two workers back. Let's go ahead and just take those two. So that's going to be a total. That's a nickel there. And now I get three cards back. So the roads, the vineyard, and the farm, which I really don't care about now. But the roads, I probably do. We have a lot of money. One, three, six, ten for sure. So that's 10. Is that worth five bucks to me is the question. That gets me stone though. So it's tempting. For three stone for five bucks? Or I could buy that card for five bucks and that's more useful going forward. The answer is no. That, all those cards are now going to probably permanently hang out in my discard. So I'm done with that. Two cards are going to be the Gem Searchers and Refinement. Done.
36 is a, a thief, and 34 is a crook. <laughs> 34, uh, place a worker from one to three times, pay one rep to gain four bucks. That would have been useful earlier. Now, probably not. And then the thief, take uh, one of the four cards from the current market for free. Place the stolen card in your discard stack, then place the thief on top of it. If a discount token is on chosen card, place it above the card market. All right. So I have my discards pretty easy, I think. Paul says, under 10 minutes before, or until 10 minutes before the stream, I'd never heard of fam. Now I'm seriously thinking of ordering it. I'm just saying, my job is to show y'all games. What you decide if, it, if it's a good match for you or not, there you go. Um, so we're done with admin. And now here's our hand of cards, which is looking kind of svelte because honestly, I think those two, oh, I forgot to put those out. Hold on. One there and one there. There we go. Forgot to put them. There we go. Have a good night, Chip. Thanks for hanging out. Okay. Yeah, Murr, I will actually, I apologize. Uh, I will be heading there Monday. I'll head to the post office, so my apologies on that. Um, so I think, for all intents and purposes, those two are just going to clutter my hand and cost me two bucks or whatever. So now, all of a sudden, my hand becomes very, very svelte. So I think what I will do is I'll go and pay the five bucks first and foremost. So here, let's go and do this. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to go ahead and take the senior supplier because that's going to be my stone supply now going forward. 78. Oh, hey, a quarry. Which, well, that's another discard available to me now as well. Okay. Uh, this is 2F Spiele. This is uh, Friedman Freezes. Friedman. Uh, but Rio Grande is going to be, if you're here in the States, just FYI. Um, there you go. Okay. So. Yeah. Let's go ahead and play the senior supplier. And I want stone there because that's the only thing I don't have. I have a plethora of other stuff. Okay. Um, I'll take my five bucks. I'll play the baker. That'll cost me a wheat. And that will go there. Two points and five bucks. Take a 10, put five back. Play a town, which is going to be one, one, one. Six points and two bucks. One, two, ding, three, four, five, six. All rounder and then the town. One, one, and one. Two bucks. It's another five there. Six points, boom, done. Let's build some row ads, shall we?
That's five points right there and there. And I'm going to pay the seven. Get the tax collector back into my hand. Griefill. 72. So monument. And is it per? Uh, that needs, I need a lot of stone. If so, place one to three building blocks on any building sites. If you place two or three blocks, you can place them on the same or different sites. For each building block, pay a stone to gain two points. So that's a six point card for a ton of stone. The problem is it's the one thing I don't have a lot of is stone. So I'll go ahead and bust out the uh, tax collector. I'll go ahead and put one on, say, there. I want to put these on top. So here. Okay, good. So I get one per settlement and one per town. I forgot to put the two towns out. I know, I know, I know. So settlements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points. Uh, eleven bucks, sorry. That seems good. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and uh, admin. No, we haven't reached 150 yet. We're at 114, that's when we reach it, okay? I do have roses, that's a good point. I do. <sighs> all right, we're gonna admin. I have two cards left in my hand, that's one. I will go ahead and take two dudes. One off there, one off there. So that's gonna be a one, three bucks. That's five, that's 10. All right, I'll take the town, the two roads and tax collector back for free. And then one, three, Six, ten, so ten bucks. Now the question is, do we want any of these? So let's see, we have the harvest hands here. Settlement, eh, well, we need settlements to be able to do towns, don't we? Right. Because right now we can only build two towns, three towns. We're okay for this turn. So that is six, and that's $13 for those two cards. Ooh, that's a lot. Ooh, that's a lot. I don't know. Ah, 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 ah. ah, that's expensive. Let's do it. Another 13, so I get seven back. Okay, done. Replace two cards, we'll get rid of the crook and the thief. Yeah. Hey, well, uh, yeah, let me finish this first. 32, the perfumer. Uh, take a, uh, pay a rose, get three points. You can do that up to twice. No? All right. And there, any two resources. Okay. Oh, other way. Supplier. So all of a sudden, those roses are worth three points a piece. Yeah, I only have four towns left to place. Correct. So I probably, hold on, let me move that one off. 
there and that one off there so I can see the towns clearly. I have one, two, three, four. Oh, so yeah, I guess I didn't need to spend the money because the settlements, ah, oh well, that's all right. So all of a sudden, I want a lot of stone. <clears throat> so it's worth the three bucks to me. I'm going to play the harvest hands. And we're just going to go one, two, three to get three stone and I'll pay my three bucks for the privilege. That's worth it. Okay. I actually need wheat, too. Well, shoot. I need, oh. <sighs> oh, this is tricky. No. This is tricky. Hey, Drew. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. Wow, this is tricky. What do I do here? Um, because the order in which I pull it back, so one, so those are free, and then one, three, six, ten. I actually have enough money to, to where I don't actually think it matters. I think I'm overthinking it. Yep. All right. So if that's the case, I'll take the revenue for five. I will take the settlement, which will be one, one, and one. And the settlement will actually go there. I don't think it really matters. And that'll be three points and three bucks. Then we're going to build some roads. I need wheat, don't I? So if I need wheat, I guess we're building more farms. So that'll be there for a farm. And that for the point or no, I feel like I should be able to be a little bit more productive with the road. Um, I'm okay with that. So that's four points because that. Then I will go ahead and bust out a farm, which is a grape and a stone. That'll be three points and three wheat. And that will go there. I'll do a baker, which is two points and five bucks. I'll do the town and then I will all rounder and do it again. So I'll just do this twice. That's two wheat, two stone, two grapes. And that'll be two towns. 
which will go there and there, which will be 12 points and four bucks. That's a five, take a one back, take those, make that a 10, okay. And that's 12 points, four and eight. Let's get some cash, shall we? So, uh, we will put this one on that. And that'll be a buck per settlement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight towns. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Make that 15. Did I not pay the wheat for the baker? I thought I did. If I didn't, let me know. And now I get to see what I need. I put that on a town. So we'll put them right there. And I take three, re uh, just make sure it's any three, right? From the senior supplier, that's how I was planning it. Yep, of your choice, same or different. Okay, so that'll be two wheat and a stone, I think. And I owed a wheat and a stone. I don't know if I had it, so I will pay the roses according to Murr. And I did pay the wheat for the baker. Okay, so there's that. Um, am I going to purchase the cards? I really need stone for that. Um, is that worth the six points for the five bucks? I don't know if it is. I'm looking at that and the rose. It's one or the other, right? I think I'll go ahead and purchase the monument out of there. So that'd be a nickel. Ninety-two comes into play. Five, oh, hey, five roads. Well, that's helpful. Where have you been all my life? Place up to five roads, gain a reputation for each road, plus an extra rep, right. There you go. Wow, that's way better than the two roads. You just gotta pay a resource for it, right? Um, I believe, let me, I didn't finish reading that, sorry. Follow all the rules of regular roads, there we go. All right, well that's a good card. We'll go ahead and do the monument now. So I'm going to discard a stone and two roses. And let's just go ahead and close off that area up here. So one, two, and three. And that'll be six points. Two, six. There we go. All right. Well, ad, uh, admin, I have one card left in my hand. So that's two. I will take two dudes back. That'll be one. Two. So that'll be four. That's a nickel. Minus one. There we go. Top three cards, monument, senior supplier, and tax collector. And then let's just, uh, let's just get a load of cards, basically. One. This will be the last time we need the town, so the town's going to go away after this. So this will probably be really early. Uh, so one, three, six. Ugh. Oh, well, hold on. Six. So hold on. So there's my six. What else? Looking at the order of these, I don't know that I need any of this stuff. Because I'm going to get five roads.
Did I? Oh, I didn't pay for the perfumer card, did I? <laughs> My bad. I'm total six. That's 10, because that would have been the top card. So four more bucks. I apologize. So six back. So what am I discarding out here? I would have to refill that. That is going to be the senior farmer. And then that's how many cards we have left before we get into the final stage there. Okay. All of a sudden I need resources. So I'm looking at the quarry and five roads I definitely would like to keep. I'm not taking any of those, so I'm done. Those two cards will go away. Fourteen. I like our chances of that staying there. And the bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Sixty-four. Okay, good to know, Murr. 64 is pay two bucks. Take one of the four cards from the current market into your hand. Eh. All right. Done. So first things first. I need stone. I'll pay the five bucks. Take the quarry into my hand. 48. Will be a pit, which is a worse quarry. But the interesting thing to note, it requires roads though. I will pay the $7 for the roads. So getting three back. Okay. 76. And that is a plantation, which is better grapes. Okay. I think it's time to build a bunch of roads, question mark. But then I need resources for the court. Right. <laughs> But I have to have road. Oh, I have a road here. You know what? Let's go with the quarry. That's going to be a wheat and a grape because the bridge here. So that will be there. And I only have one more settlement left anyways. That'll be three points. We're at 147 and four stone. Okay. Huh. Order of operations here gets tricky. Should have got the settlement out. Hmm, I see this now. Oh, this is tricky. Oh, you're right, I did. But you're 100% you're right, Paul. All right. There is, there is Gusarino. It's uh, it's the uh, Mason's work for different resources. Yeah, 
Uh, I saw that out there, so that's why I got the fish. Um, yeah, I didn't actually need to purchase the perfumer. Eh, oh, well. You know what? Let's go and bust that out. But the... Yeah, I'm okay with that. That'll go, say, there. Turn in these two for six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're at 153 now. So here, this is this seems to be messing y'all up. So how about we do this? That's what we're at. So 153. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to do the senior supplier to take three wheat. Because I'm going to go... Town, all-rounder, town, okay? So it's going to be two wheat, two stone, two grapes for the last two towns. And that'll go one and two. So that'll be 12 points and four bucks. So turn in one, take a five, 12 to 15. I'll do the baker, which that will go there. Cost me a wheat. That's two points and five bucks, which is another 10. Feel like it runs a little long though. That's, that's my only thing so far. Um, we'll go ahead and get the tax collector. So we're looking at one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen bucks. If my math was right, that's another ten right there. So we're at forty. Makes it really easy for you all to see this way. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's build some roads, y'all. There. So it can be two stone, two grape, and a wheat. Up to five. And it's a point apiece. Don't have to, but probably gonna. So... There's two for the two stone. Three for the wheat. Oh, I, one thing I didn't mention is you can only ch like junction off and change directions off of settlements and uh, building sites. So they have to be grapes. So I think we could do one and two. That'll be another five points. There we go. We have fish left. We have two cards left. I have no stone. I have no nothing, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take our three bucks. One card and then the two dudes on settlements. So it'll be one there. And one there. I don't think it matters. Take back top three cards. One, two, three. One, three. 
six. Ten, fifteen. I think we stop there. That's fifteen. Five back. Thank you. And the two extra points for connecting. Yep. For connecting. Uh, I know it was that one and one other, but fair point. Thank you. don't want that one and I don't want the the plantation actually might come in useful so as will that so the bazaar actually I will toss those two okay three cards left 38 and 88 38 uh, place a bridge finally for four points across the river and then Papyrus. I don't know what Papyrus is. 88. Copy the action of the top card on your discard stack. Well, how, how do you do? Okay. All right. All right. One card left. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break these over, these 12, and put that on top, and that's where we're at. Okay, so town is now useless. I'm just kind of there. Uh, I need resources more than I need anything right now, right? So that leaves this one. And that's it right now. Unless... So here, let me spend three bucks. Go ahead and take the wheat supplier into my hand. We immediately agree fill, and this is the last card of the regular deck, which is 96. 96 will come in. Crocodile sacrifice. And that is 96. Place a worker. Remove a crocodile from a resource space. So place a worker on a building site. Remove a crocodile from a resource space and gain three rep. All right. My ancient time sniper rifles from the city into the rural area. Uh, interesting, but okay. So the wheat supplier will go onto any city or settlement there. That'll be two wheat. I'll take the senior supplier, which will be onto there, there, there. That's all done. That's done. That's done. One right here. There's only one. There's only one settlement left without somebody. Uh, two, I guess, without somebody on it. Three resources, so what will I need? I know I need a grape. Uh, I know I'll need a stone. And I'll take another wheat, and that's my third one. Then I will play the vineyard, which will cost me a wheat and a stone. That'll get me three points. Ooh, I only have one left. I forgot. Back that up. 
So if that's the case, instead of taking the stone, I will take another grape. And I won't play that. And instead, I will play the quarry. And the quarry will go right there. And that'll cost me a grape and a wheat. That'll be the three points, and I get four stone for it. Okay. Might as well do the tax collector because it ain't getting any better. So is that 18 now? Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's 18. Okay. The baker, spend a wheat, get two points, and five bucks. So five and five is another ten. Have a good night, Renee. Um, I guess we do the monument now. Pay three stone. One, two, one. That's six points there. Uh, let's see. Crocodile sacrifice, and then I will immediately play it. So that's seven bucks. And then I'll use the all-rounder with it to play it twice. So two workers. One, two, remove two crocs. Six points. There. I think I'm gonna, oh, we need to refill, sorry. All right, the palace, number 120. Doesn't come into play yet. But that seems good. Okay. Just saying, papyrus in the palace is kind of nice. So I'll spend five bucks. Take my word for it, I did. I'll take Papyrus into my hand. 112. So all it's doing is pushing these out now. Uh, so the juggler. What the hell does the juggler do? Did I forget three points for the quarry? 106. Juggler, place a worker upright in any town and then gain three for every town that was built. Well, that seems good. So I'll pay seven. We're down to 29. I'll take the juggler into my hand. Then we have the grand bridge. Fancy. Okay, all right. It's 118, so that will come over. 
Uh, masons work. And there's where the fish come in. Right there. Okay, yeah, I thought so, Mar uh, Martha. Thank you. Uh, so 108 says, pay $3 in up to five different resources and gain that many points depending on how many. I'll pay seven bucks for that one. And then I'll immediately do it. So, oh wait, one, two, three, what am I missing? <gasps> I don't have a rose. So I won't play it quite yet, I'll just put it in my hand. Fine. And number 104, Channel Festival. Pay up to nine and then get one rep for every town or two points for every city. What? Number 104. Pay one resource of your choice for each of the up to nine settlements next to the channel. Gain two per supplied town and one, oh, okay. The channel being specifically right there. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. It's 10 points. Yeah. But it costs five resources. Probably not gonna do that one. I think I'm done at that point. But now the question is, Now I'll pay, play the juggler and then play Papyrus, right? So Papyrus at number 88, copy the action of the top card on your discard stack. And the juggler at 106 says, uh, place a worker upright in any town, gain $3 for each built town. So I can do that twice. So there's one, and there's one. So $6 for every town. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 42 bucks. 30, 42. I'm out of tens. There we go. Uh, the channel fest festival can be the same. So that could be five fish for seven bucks. Okay, that's a fair point. And I will pay five fish. Oops. So that is 10 points, right? One, two, Three, four, five. That's 201. Need to agree, Phil. Hey, we have our first of the four in game triggers. So the Harvest Festival comes in. Oh. Six more bucks, because math. My bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, the Harvest Festival is number 110. The Harvest Festival says, Pay one resource of your choice for each of up to ten settlements connected by uh, with one another by roads and bridges. You can choose same or different resources. Two rep per supplied town and one per settlement that is not a town. So that's everything on that side of the border, isn't it? But not gonna, I, I'm struggling on resources. So you know what? Let's go ahead and play the Mason's work. That will go one there. Spend these four, that'll be 10 points. I am out of resources. I feel like that was efficient at least. 11. And here's what we have left. 
The town is a dead card. I can't use it. I have no where to build that. I have no roses and I have no resources. So I guess that's that. Pull two back. Off the towns. So one, two. So that'll be two bucks. This is ridiculous. Take back top three cards. I mean... How much do I have here? I'm just curious. 55, 60, 65? I'm gonna have to math this a moment. One. Okay. One, three, six, ten, fifteen, twenty one, twenty eight, right? Uh, thirty six, forty five, fifty five. So I could theoretically take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards back for fifty five bucks. 10 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Both of those are useful. That's useful. That is not. That is not. That is useful. That is not. That is, because then that frees up that. It just gets a little overkilly here. Do I have the availability to be able to do that? Because I'm going to use that once, probably that twice. That isn't. So 45 bucks to take these nine cards in a hand. 35, 45, leaves me 20 bucks. Okay, so now we're just gonna, like stuff that isn't going to happen. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. That's unlikely to happen, but maybe. That's just not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. That could. All right, so we're just getting rid of cards that just off screen that just aren't going to. Probably not, but. Okay. All right. So senior supplier definitely will happen, right? How many cities do I have that's open or town or towns, whatever settlements? One, two. I have two. So I need to figure out where I'm going to use those, right? Because that gets me a wheat. Or that gets me three bucks per. I don't know if money is useful at this point. Uh, kind of want to build a grand bridge, it looks like. So getting resources is going to be important. So these two are going to happen. That's going to be my two cities, which then means that's not going to happen this turn. Uh, I cannot build that. That's dead. All those are just dead. So that's not happening this turn. That's not happening this turn. Um... That is going to give me money there. 
I don't care about this one. That's not going to happen this turn. This will, and then that. All right, so let's start with these. There for two grain. Then that for three resources, there. And those three will be a grape, a st one of each, or a grape and a stone for sure. And then I will take another one, which will be a, say, a stone. Done. So, correct me if I'm wrong. That and that allows me to do that twice. One there. One there for six points. Where am I? There. Uh, okay. Then I'll do that to get that we settled on 18. That was 18. And then papyrus means 36. And I'm done. Because I'm not building any of that. So I have a ton of cards in hand. I'll take two dudes off. One, two. There. That's two bucks. Uh, top three cards done. And then one, three, six. For that for sure right for those and is there anything else worth taking that is going to get me resources or points no 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 yeah no I'm just not gonna bother uh, so I paid my money these two cards are fine we get out two new ones we have the treasurer there's the card that I want 116 and 114. So 114, the mummy goes out there. Treasurer comes out soon. And the mummy says you can pay up to 10 resources and get a point plus one per uh, building block that's out there. Probably not going to do that. So I'll pay the three bucks to take that just because to get it out of there. Yeah, it definitely runs too long. Um, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. It'll just go away. The Wastelands, which now brings the treasure in, which is what the whole point of that was, because that's the card that Murr had mentioned. So I'll pay the seven to go ahead and grab that one. And that'll be uh, 24 bucks for 12 points. 12 is 1, 2, 29. There. Grief fill. Drought. That's three quarters of the way through. And at this point, it's just... Uh, what do we got? Uh, I guess we can build... The Grand Bridge, so we'll go ahead and pay seven bucks for this one. What that says, so it's going to be a total of 12 IO total, is pay a wheat, a stone, and a grape, and five bucks, which that was seven and five. There you go, 12 points. One and one, we're at what, 241 now? Refill, sandstorm, 
That's the last one. So all four are now out. Oh, wrong, wrong button. Sorry, there we go. There, all four are out. I'm just gonna go ahead. Oh, let me check treasurer. Hey, that's a good point, I couldn't. You're right, so I will back it up 12 points. You are 100% correct. There we go, and get 12 bucks back. Because all, I have somebody there, I have somebody there, I have somebody there, I have somebody there. We're gonna call it there. I, there, I, I say no more turns, boom. I take the sandstorm, <coughs> and that'll do it. 229 points. It runs too long, that's my only gripe. Otherwise, I really, really like this game. Um, so I'm looking at the, the 150 points was the, the first goal, right? Place three bridges is another goal. Place two palaces is another goal. Gain at least 250 points. I had 229, I probably could have gotten more here if I tried, I think. Finish all four monuments on the building sites by placing all 15 building blocks. Place all nine workshops. I already did that. Leave 10 or fewer crocodiles. We have seven, so we did that as well. Now, you can only mark off one per plate, so there's that. Um, so, there you go. Yeah, other than... Other than it just running too long, because like one of the one of the cool things about engine builders, a lot of times, is you get an engine going, you get to enjoy it for a little bit, and then game ends. That just ran a little long. More players, admin takes out more cards, the whole nine yards, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it definitely is shorter with more players. Yeah, the market churns through because there's no adjusting of the of the of the um, of the number of cards based on player count. So the more players, the more you're churning through the market quicker, right? So this is one of those inverse games, like with uh, I'm trying to think. Um, Indonesia is another one that comes to mind, where the game plays shorter with more players instead of plays longer with more players. So keep that in mind. All right, so there you go, yeah. I mean, and I, I see no reason why you couldn't house rule it to where you take out X amount of cards, however many you want to. You won't, you know, you could randomly just remove them. If you want a shorter experience, I see no problem with that. So there you go, there you go, yeah, there you go. That was fun though, I liked it. And, and, I mean, Look at what we built, right? So, told you, I forget to, my bad, my bad. But we won, so there's that, all right? Yeah, Corey says, feels like terraforming Mars, that way more players goes way fast. Yeah, fair point. Um, but yeah, there you go, so that's fam. I really enjoyed it. It just ran a little long. That's my only gripe, but like we've established more players runs quicker. So there you go. I enjoyed that. All right. And apparently uh, a bunch of y'all uh, have copies coming. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Thanks everybody for watching. I certainly appreciated the company today. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Stay warm. Apparently everywhere it's freezing cold. Be safe. Uh, be kind to one another. Wear your mask. Social distance. And uh, if you have someone special in your life, I would definitely recommend doing something special. Give it thought tomorrow. It's Valentine's Day, which I realize is a completely total made-up holiday, but it still gives you an excuse to be sweet to one another. So, hey, if you don't have somebody out there, how about you just be sweet to somebody? You at the grocery store, offer to take their cart back or whatever. doesn't matter. Pay it forward tomorrow. That's what tomorrow should be about. All right? Be kind to one another. So that's it. I will see you all tomorrow, 7 p.m., so just over 24 hours from now, for another 
six player Age of Steam game. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Like, subscribe, hit that up. By the way, I forgot. I missed this. Murr, thanks for re upping for the support. I. The number doesn't go up because you're already there, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, fine. They're all made up. You know what I mean. Don't be, don't be that guy, Guzzarino and Brian. All right. Y'all have a good rest of your night. Stay warm. Be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. <laughs> we won! Below zero. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Not just no, but hell no. Good night, y'all.